I'm super excited for tonight. It's like the fifth or sixth clear night in Wales, which is unheard of. I'm absolutely exhausted, but I'm super excited. It's not completely dark yet, but shortly I should be able to photograph Orion, Sirius, the winter constellations like Taurus and Gemini. And then in the pre-dawn hours in the morning, the Milky Way core returns to the night sky. So the moon's not gonna interfere with the sky at all tonight. There's a rising crescent moon in the morning and the forecast is just perfect. So we've got astral photography from sunset to sunrise. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. So I'm in Pembrokeshire in West Wales and now to photograph the winter constellations like Orion, Taurus and Gemini I need a nice west, southwest facing view but for the Milky Way core in the morning I need a nice southeast facing view. So I was thinking about that when choosing my location but there's another huge reason that I chose this location on the south coast of Pembrokeshire. So we've got these beautiful stacks here which you can photograph from a lot of different angles. And then a few hundred meters in that direction is a really stunning rock arch known as the Green Bridge of Wales. I think that's going to be my southeast facing composition for the Milky Way core. <music> Because this is such a wide scene, I've been shooting with the 14 millimeter lens and it's probably gonna be a vertical panorama as well. And I found a really nice composition. God, those birds are loud. <laughs> and I think I found my foreground now, quite happy with it. Um, it looks a little bit deeper into the, the cauldron here compared to the other composition. But there's a ship out to sea with a huge light and it's ruining the shot. It's just so powerful and I think what I'm going to do to try and counteract that is to run into the scene and try and stand in front of the light and then at least in the final image instead of the light just being a distracting what the hell is that it will kind of have a purpose and it will bring attention to the tiny little figure of me in the scene and hopefully having me in the scene will add a sense of scale to this scene because these stacks are huge I just I don't even want to guesstimate, but they are massive. And this cauldron as well, it's just so, so big. And so hopefully having a bit of a tiny human in the scene will give that sense of scale and also give a purpose to that really annoying light in the distance. So I'm going to work on my foreground. Probably going to do a focus stack because I'm really close to the foreground and I'm shooting at f2.2. And then I'm going to pan up and do the sky. And I've got the move, shoot, move, star tracker set up ready to go for that and yeah hopefully hopefully the image turns out nice so you might be wondering why i didn't use the star glow filter on this image and well i thought i did i was working in the dark and i accidentally pulled out the light pollution filter and was waving that in front of the lens Oops. And so now it's, uh, it's only 9.30 p.m. And really, I want it to come out about 2 a.m. for the Milky Way core. I'll give me two hours um, to play with the Milky Way and the Milky Way core. There's a lot of time in between um, these two main shots that I want. So what could you do uh, with that time? I mean, you could shoot northwest and get the um, Cassiopeia constellation and the faint region of the Milky Way that passes through Cassiopeia. Unfortunately for me there's a lot of light pollution in that direction so it's not really worth shooting. There's still an opportunity for a Milky Way arch from sort of Sirius, Orion, um, got Pleiades there as well and Andromeda would be over there as well, the little spiral galaxy but Got a lot of light pollution in that direction and the foreground I don't think really works well here. 
You also got Leo the lion, the constellation, but it's very high in the south at the moment. So you could do some deep sky astrophotography. I think I might go and take out my telephoto lens and sky watch a GTI, do some deep sky astrophotography whilst I'm waiting for the Milky Way. And then I could jump in the van and bring up the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. And I could use that to learn some new skills whilst I've got all this free time. So I very recently started Peter Hanley's class Spanish for Beginners because I travel to a lot of Spanish speaking countries and I'd love to be able to speak to the locals. And with Skillshare Premium you can access thousands of classes on a wide range of topics from photography, graphic design, all things freelancing and there's even plenty of astrophotography content too. You certainly can't go wrong with Ian Norman's Nightscapes Landscape Astrophotography course. I learned so much from Ian when I was starting out in landscape astrophotography and his structured Skillshare course is a great introduction to the hobby. So if you'd like to join thousands of others taking the next step on their creative journey, Skillshare are giving away a one month free trial for the first 1000 people who follow the link in the video description, or you can use my code Alan Wallace at the checkout and access all of those classes for one month completely free. So I set up my deep space rig and somehow managed to mess up the intervalometer settings. Basically left my camera outside shooting nothing for hours. Another oops. All right, so now at the second location, this rock arch is called the Green Bridge of Wales, and it's a stunner. It's so big. A little bit windy now, so I'm hoping that's not going to mess up the Star Tracker later on. The Milky Way is starting to come up, but I've got two hours of, of darkness left until astronomical twilight kicks in. So I'm working on my foreground now, and I've just been taking some test shots with the 14mm lens, and found a really nice composition in portrait orientation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the 24mm lens and do a vertical panorama, and that will give me a very similar frame to what I'm seeing in portrait orientation with a 14 millimeter lens. But with the vertical panorama, I'm gonna get a much higher resolution final image, more detail, less visible noise, and it means I can work on my foreground now. And then by the time I'm finished working on my foreground, hopefully the Milky Way will be high enough in the sky and in position that I want it to be, and I can check the star tracker on the move, shoot, move, and then track the Milky Way and create that panorama. Guys are looking crystal clear. I think it's a bit hazy. It's been sunny here in Wales for so many days now that the haze has just built up. But hopefully we'll get a good image. So I'm shooting on the uh, Sony A7 IV, which has been astro modified by Spencer's cameras in Utah, USA. And first impressions of the A7 IV, this camera's magic. I wasn't expecting it to be much of an upgrade over the A7 III, but the images I've taken over the past week, crazy sharp, not much noise. The color separation, the color accuracy is amazing. I've been very, very impressed, and I'm so surprised how big of an upgrade it is over the A7 III, because again, I really wasn't expecting much. But I will, of course, make a full review at some point after I've had a good two or three months using it. And the Astro modification done by Spencer's has been flawless. I haven't found any issues with it. And um, so far, a very impressive camera. Oh, and also, the second gain ISO, the ISO invariance second stage, kicks in at ISO 400, which is amazing. Uh, on the A7 III, it was 640. Now I can go down as low as a, uh, ISO 400 to protect highlights and star color and that kind of thing. So I will make a full review in due time. All right, so I've just finished up with that 24 mil shot. The Milky Way is now 
passing further into the south, so it's passed out of the composition. I could move left, capture a very similar shot, get a bit more of the core, but I think I'm going to go for a different shot instead. I'm just going to switch back to the 14mm lens and get a wider scene, get a lot more of the Milky Way, also a bit more of the foreground, and it'll be nice to have a different image to the one that I just captured. So. I'm going to get cracking. I'm running out of batteries, so I'm not sure how much longer this vlog is going to last. Oh, it's getting cold, the wind's really picked up. I hope it's not ruining my Star Trekker images. But you guys have probably seen the final image already, so I hope it's gone smooth without a hitch. Because after using a light pollution filter, thinking I was using the Star Glow filter, and then messing up the deep sky stuff, I think it's a sign that I need some sleep. Oh, but it's been an incredible night. Hope those images come out nice. I hope you've enjoyed the vlog. I'm gonna wrap it up because this thing's on 3% battery. <laughs> Pretty much the same as me. Oh, anyway guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know which of the images is your favorite. Drop a Milky Way emoji if you're looking forward to Milky Way core season like I am. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.